Welcome back to Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show showing you the stories of entrepreneurs and how they have reached millions. Today, we are talking about income and impact. I have Tunji. He's joining us from across the pond in London. That sounds a little bit exotic. I am super excited. He is somebody who helps people get their book published. He has helped over a hundred authors get their books published, start their business with their book, because we all know if you want to speak on more stages, you need a book. If you want authority, you need a book. You need to be able to point people to your Amazon and show them third-party reviews and everything that he does shows you how to do that. But he didn't start off as a rock star publisher. He started off doing this part-time Tunji, take us back to how this all got going for you. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Thank you for having me on. Um, it's amazing to be on here. And the reason why I actually love this is because I actually have the same phrase for what I do. I tell people, increase your impact, your influence, and your income with a book. So how did this start? Basically, I wrote and published my first book in 2011, but I didn't know the power of a book at that time. Um, I, I'm dyslexic, so I, I didn't even think I could write a book. <laughs> I, I was bad at grammar, I was bad at English, did not do well um, education-wise because of being dyslexic, and I was born premature, so I'm thinking, is that the reason why? Born premature, weighed one pound, had it all in my heart. And um, wrote my, my first book, got it published, then I started getting invitations to speak at events and um, you know all that kind of stuff even though it's a christian book but fast forward to 2014 looking for work for a couple of years and not getting a job i just thought what can i do and you know someone said oh you've written three books how can i write a book another person said the same thing and someone else said the same thing and that's how all this started you know so it's been um, an amazing journey you know being able to help people just take their ideas out of their head onto paper and into a book. And for me, I, I just love seeing that process where someone comes to you and at the end of their time working with you, the finished product is in their hands. And that's, that's, that's awesome. the amazing feeling for me. That's, that's the amazing feeling for me. And for me, it's, I never, ever thought I could ever be in business. Just because of how I grew up, you know, being told you're useless, you're this, you're that, you have dyslexia, so none of, you know, you just can't do this, you just can't do that. And being able to do what I do right now is just a blessing, and it's a just, it's amazing for me. Okay, so take us back to, I, I want to unpack some of this. We'll get to the author and the book in a second, but I want to know, because that so many entrepreneurs that I have interviewed have the same thing. They were told that they they were not going to amount to anything. They weren't doing anything well. And then they overcame those challenges. So tell us a little bit about how did you end up writing your first book? Like what inspired you to write it, especially coming from a dyslexic past? Like you have a hard time reading, you have a hard time with grammar. A lot of people out there have a lot of negative voices in their head. They're telling them they could never do that. What was the moment that sparked for you that changed it and let you know you could do it um for me at that time um i was a full-time carer for my mom she had um diabetes a stroke and kidney failure and about i think two of my friends had written a book and published it and i thought oh i went to their book clubs and i thought about if they can do it then i should be able to do this i thought about it but i've just never ever taken the step and when my mom passed on is when that spark came and said, okay, you've got to do this and do it for her. So my first book was dedicated to my mom. That's what gave me the spark at that time to actually go and get it done. I was, I was kind of writing it while I was taking care of mom, but I just didn't really, you know, put the, the energy into it until when she passed away. So that was my kicker. That was the energy. That was the thing that really sparked me to say, go and get this done. And within a year of her passing, I published it on my 30th birthday because it was on my, on my 29th birthday that I was told she was going to pass. 
So one year on, I said, I'm going to get this done, publish it on my 30th birthday and dedicate it to her. So that was the kicker for me. Okay. Awesome. So talk to me about so many people have great ideas, right? I have a whole whiteboard over here that is just (laughs) ideas. Then I have a whiteboard of stuff that I'm doing. So many people, especially entrepreneurs get stuck in that, like, I want to do something, I want to do it, but I can't quite do it. And writing a book is daunting, right? I mean, 60, 80, 150, 200 pages, that's a lot to write. Like, it's a lot to outline. How did you break it down? Because it's not like you said you had a few friends who had written books, but it's not like you went and bought a course. It's not like you were a writer. You grew up, like you, your own words, struggling with dyslexia. I also struggle from that a little bit, but how did you like, did you just sit down and through sheer force of will type it out? Did you write it by hand? What gave you like the oomph? I know your mom dying, like got you there, but what did you actually do? What was your daily routine? How did you get it done? And how did you overcome the voices in your head who said like, you'll never be a published author. You're not good enough. This isn't going to happen. Um, my daily routine at that time, funny enough, was Facebook. Um, I'm not sure you remember the times when you can write notes and tag people in it. That's what helped me get my first book done. So I wrote a lot of notes on particular topics. And all I did was transfer those notes onto Word and brushed it up a bit and turned it into a book. You know, so that that's what helps me to get my first book done. But of course, from there, during my second and third book, I had to find a process. So my process is mind mapping the book out first. I think the reason why most people don't get their book done is because they try to write it and there's no plan to it. So I try to put a plan in place and find out what am I writing about? What is actually going to be in this book? Outline it and then go and write it. So that it's just an easier process um, with the journey of getting the book done. I, I love that. And I I mean, I've written three books. I'm actually working on the fourth right now, but it's very interesting. The first one is always the hardest, right? Because yeah. it's like, oh, what am I going to do? And just like what you said, the first one that I did, I had some bullet points, but what happened is I would start writing, I would start to get content. And then like, I would go down a rabbit hole and like, do I need to write this? Do I need to write that? And it took me, I want to say it took me just over a year, but then the next one was shorter. And the next one, I think I got done in two weeks, like very quick, much, much faster because I had a process. So we're going to get into your process because I know that it's good. You helped over a hundred authors, but I want to kind of finish with your like this journey for you. So you wrote a few more books and then 2014 people started asking you, well, how did you write a book? Can you help me write a book? What, what was the conversation going on in your head at that time? Cause I think a lot of people would say I might've been able to do it for myself, but I don't know if I can do that for other people. How did, yeah. how'd that go for you? <laughs> that definitely was the conversation. And obviously, you know, baffling the stacks here and, and cause of the, the journey of not getting a job and stuff like that really got me thinking, that, are you sure you can start a business? Do you have what it takes? If you've not been successful in securing a full-time job, all you've done is part-time work and contract work. How can you run a business? How do you know it's going to be successful? So I had to battle that for a couple of years, um, or a couple of months, sorry. And then I said, okay, let me go on and, you know, go to events. So I started going to events about business and how to start a business. And that's what kind of helps me gain the motivation to say, just do it. You know, I went to a publishing event and spoke with the, the guy doing the event. And he said, just go out and do it. You know, don't, don't copy me because we're in the same field, but just go out and do it. You know, and one thing I, I listened to motivational stuff and I heard Steve Harvey say that if you don't jump, you're just never going to know. You know, you need to jump. You need to just take that bold step. And that's what I did. And I'm happy I did that because if I did it, I probably wouldn't have had anything to fall back on now with COVID. So, you know, just taking that step of faith to say, just do it. And now I've been able to help, you know, people rather than publish their books. That's awesome. I mean, that is, and Steve Harvey is right. 
if you don't jump, you will never know. And so many people, I talk to people, not as much as I used to, but I, I used to hold live events. I used to go speak at quite a few events and people would come up and they, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. Well, how long have you been? The question I always asked was, how long have you been thinking about doing it? Most of them would say years. Yeah. I'd say, well, just do it. Like, just go do it. One of the, one of my favorite motivational speeches of all time is a guy named Art. I don't know Art's last name, but his speech, which you can find on YouTube, it's dated, but it's, uh, it's probably 20 years old, but it's called just do it. And it's literally, he's like, I don't have anything fancy. Just go do it. Art, I'm going to make it happen. Just go do it. Like, yeah. that's it. Just what is step number one? And this, this actually ties really nicely into the book. I know what I, I don't teach people writing books, but yeah. anytime people are overwhelmed, I say, well, can you break it into small pieces? How do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time, like break it down into the smallest step that you can take right now and move forward. Yeah. So let's jump into what is the process that you take people through? If somebody wants to work with you, you said it is zero to 90 days. So I have a book in their hand. Yeah. So what's the process? Give us okay. the overview. So I, I have a, a six step process and it's called the author of Knows blueprint. And within that, the first part is to plan your book, okay? Like I said before, most people don't write their book because they start writing first with no plan. And then, you know, after a month or so, they put it down and say, I'll come back to it, you know? But so within the planning stage is where we actually find out what are the five W's that you need to know. So why exactly do you want to write this book? What is your why? Because when you find out your why, when you find out your reason, your purpose, your, your motivation, when you feel like giving up, you can go back to that why and that will keep you going. So if you know you want your, your why is, oh, I want to use this book to build a business, then you're going to keep going because you know that this book can be the tool that can probably transform my business or at least, you know, upscale my business somehow. You know, some people, oh, I just want to get on TV or I want to make more money. I want to get on radio or podcast or whatever the why may be. You know, so finding out why exactly do you want to write a book. Then the next W is what is this book about? There's some people that will say, oh, I just want to write a book about business. Okay, that sounds good, but what about Does it? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, what exactly about business? What type of business are you actually writing about? You know, so going down to the nitty gritty and finding out your exact topic, your exact niche, your exact genre, you know, and knowing exactly what is the purpose of this book once it's written. So when someone gets the book, they see the title, they see the cover, they know exactly what this book is about. You know, mm -hmm. and then the, the, the next one is, who is your book for? You know, some people say, oh, my book's for everyone. God, I just want to sell a million of copies. Yeah, but not everyone's going to buy your book. <laughs> you know, even Harry Potter, I don't have it because that's not for me. Even though, yes, it sold millions of copies, but I'm not the target audience. You know, so knowing exactly who your audience is, is very important when it comes to your book, especially if you're going to use a book to build a business. Because if it's for the right audience, then if you're going to upsell them anything in your book, they will buy it because it's for that particular audience. Okay, then the next of you is when is your book coming out? There's got to be a deadline. You've got to put a date to it so that you know that in the next 90 days, in the next six months, I'm actually going to get this book done, get it out there. So I tell people this, put a start date, the date of actually finishing writing the book, the date of launching and publishing the book so that you have a timeline that you're working with. And then while you're doing the start and the end date, within that, put daily dates to say every day at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., I'm going to write my book so that you know that for that hour each day, you're getting your book done. And that helps you to just go and do it. You yeah. Know, and then the last one is where is your book going? You know, what's the bigger picture for this book? Do you just want it to go on Amazon and that's it? Or do you want to use this book to make impact, influence, and income? 
Not everybody nice. wants to do that. Most people just want to put their book on Amazon. And I'm like, well, that's okay. But if you can create more impact, add more influence, and increase your income, that's a bit better. You know, so where exactly do you want your book to go? So that's the five W's that we go through when we talk about planning the book. Okay. So now you have the plan. After you have the plan, like I love... I love that you like time block when you should write. I, I'm a big believer in that. If you saw my calendar, my calendar yeah. is all time blocked out because that's how I keep myself on task. That's how I get stuff done. So I think that is a really powerful tool. What do you tell somebody who has writer's block? Because if you're trying to get a book done in 90 <coughs> days, you're really trying to get it done like 60 days because you need time to get it edited, published, cover, all that stuff. What do you tell somebody when they, they run into, quote, writer's block or... I don't know what I'm going to say, or I don't know if I sound good, or I'm not a good writer. How do you help? How do you help people overcome those challenges? Um, for me, it's the next part where we prepare the book, mind map. And I think if you mind map out your book, you can't have writer's block because you can see everything in front of you. So you know exactly what you're going to write. You have writer's block when you don't plan your book or you don't outline your book because you're just trying to write it thinking, oh, I've got a topic now, or oh, I want to write, write about weight loss, let me just go start writing. And then you get stuck because there's no plan to it. You don't know what's in chapter one. You don't know what's in chapter two. You don't know what sections are even in chapter one. So because there's no plan, that's why you have a writer's block. But if you first plan out your book, then you go and the next part of prepare the book and outline it, you can't have writer's block because you're using your outline to get your book done. Hey, thanks for taking a moment to check out this episode of Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show helping you reach millions. Have you ever thought about building your own webinar or using public speaking to reach your ideal audience? Well, if you'd like my help with it, over the last several years, I have built more than 40 live events for clients just like you. In the last 18 months, I've helped 32 entrepreneurs build their webinar with over $5 million in cumulative sales. If you'd like to see how I can work with you, or if you'd be interested in having me speak at your event or be on your podcast, go to steven.coffee, that's S-T-E-V-E-N dot C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, to book a short call with me and see how we can work together. All right, let's jump back to the episode. Got it. I mean, that does make it much, much easier. How many words do you think a book needs to be? That's a tough one. Everyone, everyone says different um, word counts, but I, I think 25,000 is fine. Maximum 30, but not over 30. I have worked with someone that has done a 40,000 word book, someone I was going to work with the, the 60 to 70 files. And I said, that's too much. That's too long. You know, you, you, you want someone to be able to read that book on a plane journey and that's it. Not, you know, a 300, 400 page book. <laughs> well, that's yeah. The, I always tell people like, if, if the book is more than about a hundred, 120 pages, yeah. they're going to get lost. Yeah. And it, if you have that much content, write another book. I well, mean, I talked yeah. to speakers. Speakers will send me like when I, I held events pre COVID and speakers would send me a book and some, one guy sent me one that was like four fifty. I was like, dude, that's like three or four books. And there's no, like either you're going way too granular on your topic or you're, you're rambling. Yeah. Um, that was my take, but I always love to ask that question of people that publish books because it's such a, such a wide variety answer. Like they're all over the place, but as long as you yeah. have a mission, statement behind it as to why it is. And I like, I like the way that you phrased it as you should be able to read it on a flight two to three hours, be through the book, have the main takeaways and be on. Right. That's it. Nice. So talk to me a little bit about tools that you give people to use. Cause you talked about word, you talked yeah. about writing. Is there anything I've heard people say, you know, go back and get an old school typewriter. I've heard people say, you know, <laughs> word processor, something that you're not distracted by the internet. Is there any tools or tips that you would give people that are trying to sit down? They're going to mind map it. Where do they go from there? So for, for mind mapping, I love the old school paper. You know, I, I know, yes, we've got online tools, but I think when you use your hand to really do it, you begin to flow more. 
you know, so get a nice A4 or even a bigger size paper and just mind map your book. And then from that mind map, <clears throat> it um, after that, if you do have space in your house, you have a nice wall background like this, get some post-it notes. Get some post-it notes. Look at your mind map. Get different color post-it notes. So green, you can say chapter one. Everything green, you just put it under chapter one. Chapter two in yellow, put everything under chapter two, you know, pink. Just do that on your wall. And you, you have a framework in front of you and you can, you can see it. And just by seeing it, it goes into you and you, you can say, yes, this is my book that's about to come out, you know. And from there, if you now want to use an online tool, I would say use something called workflowy.com where you can outline your actual book, you know, and it just makes it so much easier for you. And you can email it to yourself. You can copy and paste it onto Word whatever whatever it is you want to do so those are the tools that i use basically and then of course word.com i'm sorry word.com microsoft word to you know type out the book but then most people now they speak their book okay so not everyone actually types their book out so if you want to speak your book you know there's there's a app called um rev.com so you can use rev.com on your phone or you can do it on the laptop um, there's Dictate as well. There's Otter. Those are apps that you can use to record your book and get the transcribed um, version and um, get it in Word and send it off to your editor. So those, those are the tools you can use to either get the book written or get it recorded. Nice. I like it. I mean, that's I I did... I usually speak some of it and I'll usually type some of it and I'll go in and clean it up. But if I can get the big chunks done yeah. by speaking it, because then it's like five or six pages. Then I have to go through all the ideas are there. I just got to go clean them up and edit it and then send it to an editor. Um, so editing is a really interesting one. I'm My grammar is horrible. My spelling is horrible. Having a good editor, where do you find a good editor? Do you have any tips for that one? I think it depends on budget. Of course, if you want a very good editor, it depends on budget. Um, you know, people say, okay, go to Fiverr.com, <laughs> which if you have $5 to 10 you know, or maybe $50, then that's okay. You know, but I, I recommend um, Upwork. I think Upwork, you can get a very good editor. And then there's something called Readsly. is just for anything to do with publishing. So you can get editors, book cover designers, formatters, and, you know, um, publicists and all these other things that you need for publishing your book but you need to have a good budget because <laughs> it's not it. going to be cheap but they are professional they are very very professional um you know you just to get one edit done can probably cost you between five and eight hundred dollars or pounds you know Got so it. you need to have a good budget for that um, but like I said, I think on Upwork, you can still get very good editors for a reasonable amount of, of money for anything from maybe 100 to about $300. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty reasonable. So let's talk about you have the book done. You've got it edited. Cover. How do you get it on Amazon? Do you take care of all of that for your clients? Was that no. a big step for you? I think a lot it of was. people are intimidated. <laughs> so my first book, I did use a self-publishing company, a friend of mine, but I did not like the experience. So my second book, I said, I'm going to find out how to do it myself. And that's what I did. Um, you know, so now when I work with people, so I'm not a publisher, I'm a publishing coach. So mm -hmm. I, I, I show you what to do. Okay, so I show you how to, you know, get your book on Amazon, how to, you know, set up your account, um, put in all the information there and um, get yourself to bestseller status. Um, so definitely your book cover is important, but you need to make sure you got, you've got a good title that grabs people's attention. So you've got to find a great title, great subtitle. And like I said, you can use Upwork, Readsly, if you want to use Fiverr, you can to get a cover designer. But also for cover designers, you can use um, Design Crowd or you can use 99designs. 
as well. Mm -hmm. Those are places where you can get very, very good um, cover designs done for your book. And um, after that, you know, there's platforms to publish the book. So there's KDP owned by Amazon, Kindle Direct Publishing. There's Ingram Spark. There's um, Lulu.com. There's Book Baby. There's quite a few publishing platforms that you can use, but you need to determine what's your direction because all of those companies have different offers. So um, KDP, for example, you can only do Kindle. You can't do ebook. You can well, if, even though Kindle is still an ebook, but it's not an EPUB. So it's just Kindle. And now they've started doing hard back covers. So that's great. So you can do hard back and paperback. And obviously you can do um audio book with um, Amazon's version called um ACX. But if you're gonna use um Ingram Spark, you can't do Kindle. You can do ebook, but you can do paperback and hardback. The same with Lulu.com as well. So most people use all three. Some people just use one, depending on you know what it is you actually want to do. And you know, when you're launching your book, if you decide I want to pre-order my book, you have to know that KDP doesn't do that. <laughs> you can only do that for Kindle, but not for paperback or hardback. So you would have to use Ingram Spark or Lulu.com to accomplish that goal. So there's lots of you know pros and cons um, for either platforms. Interesting. I mean, that's stuff that I've never heard before. Um, I've heard use. I've heard. I've heard a little bit around it. It's really good to hear somebody who has done it give us the information. So you brought up. Audible for a second. I want yeah. to talk about the audiobook because audiobooks are definitely becoming more and more prevalent. I know a lot of people, I mean, I listen to audio every day. Um, I know a lot of people listen to them in their cars or while they're running. Do you think everybody should do an audiobook as well as a regular book? If they're doing the regular book, should they make an audio version of it? If you are professional enough with speaking, then I think you should. If not, then I am professional to do it. Because some people want to do it and then they just want to use their phone. <laughs> you can't just record on your phone and think that's good enough to put on Audible. You actually need to probably go to a professional studio to do that. So it's going to cost you money to actually get a professional audio book done. But I do think everyone should. So when I talk about the, the profit side of things, I say you need to consider having your books in five formats. So Kindle, ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook. So that you're making money on all five formats. Most people don't want to, some people just want to, you know, a paperback and they're fine with it. But trying to do all formats definitely does make sense because not everyone wants to read a book, not everyone wants to listen to a book. So it's trying right. to cater for the different type of audience that you have. All right. So you have given us a great overview. The question that I, I want to come back to that you, you alluded to earlier is where is this going? Why do people need a book? Because this is, I know there are some people out there I've talked to, or they just say, I want to be a best selling author. I want to have a book. It will mean that I actually did something with my life. But I think you and I both know that there are a lot of really good reasons to have a book beyond just saying, I have a book. So what, when people come and talk to you, what are the reasons that you tell them they should have a book? One of the reasons is you need to build credibility. And a book gives you that credibility and authority. Okay, it helps you to be seen as an expert in that particular topic that you've written about. So when I wrote my first book on, you know, worship, which is in the Christian industry, it really expanded my reach and made, made me to be seen as the worship guy or the glory guy, because that's what was I was talking about in the book. So when you write a, a, a book on a particular subject, you're seen as the person that can speak on that subject. So when, when we go to most of these events, most of these speakers have a book and it makes them seem more credible, you know, than someone that would just give you a business card. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, so if someone gives you a book or business cards, which will you take? You take the book because you won't throw the book away, but a business card, you just keep it somewhere 
and you forget that you actually got that business card. So a book helps you to be more credible in the eyes of others. Got it. I agree. I think it's um, every speaker should have a book. Anyone who is in business that's selling a service should have a book because it immediately sets you above everybody else in the field. Yeah. So yeah. the last question I have for you is what is the biggest mistake? I know you kind of talked on trying to write without a plan, but what is one of the biggest mistakes you see people make with their book? Maybe when they're writing their book or what is a piece of advice that you hear a lot of people tout in the industry and say that people need that they really don't? Okay. So the biggest mistake, I think I've mentioned it before, is people start writing first with no plan. So I think that's the biggest mistake because that's why they never get the book done. So they need to sort that out. And um, one of the biggest advice I hear is write a book in a, in a weekend, write a book in 24 hours and all those kind of stuff. And it kind of annoys me because I'm like, you actually really can't write a book, a good book in 24 hours or have a complete book over a weekend, which means you've written the book, you've got it edited, you've got it formatted, you've got the book cover design. I've seen events where people will say they went for an event and, and at the end of that weekend, they've got their book cover. I'm like, hmm, that's a bit, that's a bit iffy right there. And but then I add, oh, no, no, they don't really have their book cover. They just print it out, put it on a normal book just to use it as advertising that they actually got their book done. I'm like, come on, that's just, you know, that's ridiculous. That's that's losing integrity. So that's one bad thing that I is get your book done in 24 hours. Get your book done in 90 days. When So in, in, in a weekend when really at least 90 days, six months is a good enough time to actually get a professional book done. That's, I think that is good advice. Um, I can say from experience, like I've gotten a really good outline that's maybe 20 pages done in a weekend and then gone back and fleshed it out. But what happens is, is you start editing and you start working things in, you, you refine it, which makes for a better reading experience, which makes a better book. Now you have to balance that. I don't think it should ever be perfect because it's never going to be perfect. I know people who have you know, they went from a 50 page manuscript to something that's 500 pages and they're still working on it, <laughs> yeah. but I don't think you should just 24 hours, get it a whole bunch of junk done and put it out because then you're spending the money to get it out there and it's not going to be a good experience. Um, yeah. that's, I think that's good advice. Well, Tunji, I wanted to say thank you so much for coming on and sharing this wealth of knowledge. I know a lot of people are going to go through this a couple of times to pull all the nuggets out. If they would like to contact you, where is the best place for people to find you? Um, so you can find me on Instagram and the information is below and also on Facebook. Awesome. So if you would like Tunji's help, Click in the show notes. We are going to have links to both his Instagram and his Facebook. You can reach out to him. He definitely knows what he's talking about. He's helped more than 100 authors get their book published and reach bestseller status. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much for having me, Steve. No problem. My pleasure. And to everybody else out there, until next time, take action, change lives, and make money. We'll see you soon.